So here for your G413 keyboard, uh, this will be a multiple part video. This is how to remove keys and actually how to dismantle this keyboard. So for those of you who are trying to remove keys, it's quite simple. Just a little bit of generous touch on it. You can give it a little bit of wiggle and they'll come off looking like that. When it comes to putting your keys back together, they have little slot indicators for you. Just be cautious when you're moving the bottom ones or the top ones, what direction you are, especially the space bar because you can see it either way. But keep in mind that this is the tilt that you want or if you want to look at the keys next to it to help you remember how to put it back on. So this is the largest one, this is the hardest one to put on, so that's why I'm showing you that. Now for completely removing it, to look on the back side of the electronics like what I'm going to be doing today to where I'm going to be resoldering re the joints that's underneath this space bar. They have came loose and this piece has actually come out. And it's interrupting my uh, gameplay with uh, the use of the space bar itself. So on the top side of this keyboard, you're going to have to remove several keys to get access to these screws. These little guys right here. There's about, there isn't about, there's exactly 28 of these little screws you'll have to remove from the front side. Now this is where they get tricky on you. On the back side, you have your little rubber mat right here on this side. There's a screw underneath it. And it's the same on this side. There's a screw underneath that one. For, those, for the large pads on each side, there's a separate screw you will have to remove in order to get this apart. And the screwdriver I used, or screw size, should I say, is a PH1. Important thing to check is to make sure your prongs are out completely by just giving a nice little tug, pulling them out. So they're completely out. Next step is to get it back into the keyboard without it getting pressed in. So as you can see here, this is where the gap is that it's supposed to go. So just line it right up. press it too hard, you'll actually depress the metal prongs into the button itself. Nice little pull out again. Good. The next step now is going to be soldering it back into place. So the two joints I'll be soldering are here and here. Be sure to preheat your solder beforehand. Have a nice little lead on itself. So there's two different ways when it comes to soldering electric components. You don't want it to get too hot on the leads. So you want to have these two contacts close to each other to when you melt the solder onto it to actually touch the component. So I'm actually touching the solder first to melt a little bit. Right now you see it's stuck on. Then I'll finish heating it up to pull it off not leaves a nice little bead onto it. I'm using actual fine electrical uh, resin core solder and dispenser so it's I believe it's a 60-40 Yep, 60% tin, 40% lead. So that's usually the good um, piece to use when working with electrical components. Always remember to unplug your solder if you're done working it. So how many times I've had it taking my skin off. So now you have it. The two joints that I just soldered are here and here. It's nice and clean, it's on the pulse, and sure it doesn't um, bleed over into some of the other components because then it'll not work properly. So now I have a nice sturdy joint to where the button's on and it doesn't fall off. And putting the keyboard back together is just as many screws and keys that you removed in the beginning. Hope this video was helpful.